Good morning. My thanks to Director Ashish Kumar for asking me to discuss the measurement of the digital economy with participants of the CEAP Management Seminar on the Future of Economic Statistics. Allow me to situate this in the, first, in the context of the rapid digitization spurred by the use of new technologies, and I'd like to give a little bit of context in the, of the Philippine experience before I zero in on the topic and close with some ways forward. The world today is so dependent on frontier technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, especially digital technology, that the line between the tangible and the digital has blurred almost beyond recognition. Markets of all kinds are becoming increasingly digitalized. Two of the drivers of digitalization are digital data and platforms. The latter are actually offering new market possibilities to businesses and benefits to consumers. But digitalization is also causing major disruptions, radically changing all elements of the value chain, including product design, supply chain, manufacturing, and customer experience, while creating new business models and disrupting entire industries at scale, causing more VUCA, vulnerability, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. There are benefits and costs to digitalization, from innovations to social good and making this world more interconnected. But with the changing nature of work, digital dividends are not inclusive and in causing another divide, putting pressure on fair competition, causing privacy issues, and even making it more difficult to raise taxes. Policies are needed to level the playing field. The emerging digital transformation is raising measurement issues and new data needs for tracking economic progress. NSOs are challenged to meet these new needs because if you don't measure up, others in the data ecosystem will pick up the slack and may threaten the sustainability of resources provided to NSOs by governments. Measurement of digital products and transactions, especially platforms, are needed, and these measures could improve the accuracy of various statistics, for instance, inflation, productivity, among others. Digitalization is being brought about by the rapid use of the internet. The ITU estimates that by end 2019, 54% of the global population, corresponding to 4.1 billion persons, are using the internet. And this is a considerable increase from 2005, when less than 20% had access to the net. In the Philippines, the internet penetration is even higher, 60.1% in 2017, up from 2% in 2000. According to We Are Social, as of January 2019, the Philippines leads countries across the world in the average amount of time spent per day, 10 hours, on the net. And the bulk of this time is on social media, about four hours. Furthermore, we have about 79 million Facebook users in the Philippines. Many of our Filipino users of social media, from Facebook to Instagram, are female and, and um, among young aged 18 to 24. And in consequence, they have become targets for advertisements and influencing, especially beauty influencers. In fact, in 2019, Instagram was the most popular online platform channel used by beauty influencers in the Philippines. As far as e-commerce is concerned, Global Web Index reports that three-fourths of internet users in the Philippines aged 16 to 64 are already shopping online, Statistica reports that Filipinos spent last year $4.7 billion on online purchases, with more than three-fourths of this $3.5 billion on online travel purchases. This report is being validated by figures from our Philippine Statistics Authority, which suggests that transportation and storage accounted for 71% of turnover from B2C e-commerce in 2015. However, there's no breakdown available by type, but most likely this was from online purchases of travel services. Removing online travel, however, Statistica reports that the average Filipino e-commerce shopper only spent $18 on online consumer goods purchases last year. How are all of these data on the digital economy and the platform economy being generated? It should be noted that the digital economy is not measured by most NSOs throughout the world given the absence 
of a commonly accepted definition of the digital economy, the digital sector, and even more so what is meant by platforms. Both an OECD and IMF survey of countries regarding national accounts compilation practices suggested that the digital sector is hardly being measured and is not a priority because of data issues or because of the lack of resources. Malaysia is an exception, which is developing an ICT satellite account that includes online platforms. UNCTAD, in its recently released report, re suggests that the digital economy is less than 10% of most economies, if measured by value added or even by employment. It pointed out that the estimates of the global digital economy can, however, range from 4.5% of the world's GDP, using a narrow definition, to 15.5% of GDP. This was based on 67 economies, 15 of these in the Asia Pacific. Rather than identifying the digital sector, an alternative to defining the digital economy is to examine, examine digital transactions. An OECD advisory expert group suggests taking uh, this approach and the possible criteria for distinguishing digital transactions is to examine how the transaction was made, what is transacted, and who is involved. An important characteristic of digitalization is peer-to-peer -peer services intermediated by platforms. However, platform measurement is challenging because online platforms and providers may not be physically located in a country concerned. Therefore, the economic transactions are not directly part of national statistics. Also, platforms are cross-sectoral and they don't easily fit in official classification systems. Another challenge is transactions need not be financial. They can be about data, as in social media, and it can be very difficult to actually value data. Economic variables such as revenue and employment are also difficult to trace since platforms spread supply across small-scale, small non-professional providers. Many platforms also do not publish their accounts or disaggregate them across country boundaries. A further challenge is that businesses are not the only actors. You have a large number of persons actually participating in platforms. Ad hoc methods such as web scraping of site usage, as well as the conduct of new surveys are actually being done by data providers other than government, such as Statista, Statista Global Index, GMSA, GSMA Intelligence, and App Annie. Direction and extent of bias in methods being used, however, by these organizations and the coverage is unknown. In measuring the platform economy, the first step is to define what we mean by platforms, which might be viewed as digital intermediaries which match supply and demand of goods and services and of information in a multi-sided market of actors through the internet. OECD similarly defines this a platform that, uh, as a digital service based on technological, social, cultural, and economic infrastructure that facilitates uh, for the facilitation and organization of online social and economic traffic between two or more distinct but interdependent groups of providers and users with data as the fuel. Regardless of whatever definition is used, platforms facilitate transactions, networking, and information exchange as the relationship among actors can be identified as B2B, B2C, etc. So at least three groups of actors are always active within the ecosystem, providers, users, and the digital platform itself. A fourth set are, provider, are, are advertisers. And we can think of one typology of platforms, those that are set up purely to act as intermediaries, matching buyers and sellers, uh, or uh, those that are set up as electronic retailers who own the products being sold. And such a distinction matters because uh, their corresponding flows are recorded in national accounts would necessarily be different. Business models and transactions are also varying across platforms. Some NSOs, for instance, the UK ONS, Statistics Canada and Eurostat, have started to actually estimate the platform economy given its growing importance, but only focus on the sharing economy, uh, which narrows platforms down to mostly C2C or P2P relations uh, and transactions. Transactions here don't have transfer of ownership. Natural platforms who possess 
underused or idle assets such as property, resources, time or skills, or to other persons such as accommodation, transportation, um, administrative support, small jobs, crowdfunding, and uh, design or consultancy work. Note that innovation-driven dri online platforms, including social media, fall outside the scope of platform economy, but outside the scope of the sharing economy. Eurostat actually is considering sharing and, and lending of assets, such as homes, cars, as part of the platform economy. However, um, uh, the gig economy is actually outside the scope of what Eurostat considers as being part of the sharing economy. Now, following the definition of platforms, we can characterize um, all of these platforms as having some interactions among providers of users, uh, enabling transactions that benefit providers as well as the users, and even the online platform. And there are new business models about profits, nonprofit models as well, and there's a multi-sided and mostly open market or community that involves this ecosystem of at least three actors, as I mentioned earlier. Further, the, the, uh, it's being governed and driven by users and provider-generated provider data, some algorithm that allows you to connect with each other. The matching and transaction processes are, are often based on a user-driven trust mechanism, including reviews and rating systems. With more, much more clarity about what we know about platforms, the next step is then to identify key data that we would need and statistical indicators to measure. On one hand, there's a need to separate online platforms from the traditional economy. This means specific indicators for online platforms and their operations, the providers, and the users and advertisers, as well as the transactions. On the other hand, for comparison purposes, we also need to link these indicators with existing statistical indicators and domains. Another precondition is that the cost of collecting data and, sur and the survey pressure has to be kept as low as possible. Descriptive indicators that are now indicate uh, that have been suggested here in these slides are restricted to basic characteristics of the online platforms themselves, the providers of the platforms, and the users of these platforms. Now, the indicators mentioned uh, could actually be measured in different ways. An important condition is that we should have a population of the online platforms available. And at the moment, unfortunately, this is not the case. An option is to start with the most important online platform, limiting their number. Possible options of data collection would be to have a dedicated survey, or second is we could use existing surveys, such as the labor force survey or ICT usage of households and of businesses. But these surveys, are, uh, while these surveys can target providers and users, they do not target the online platforms themselves. Third, we could also use web scraping. If there's already a list of online platforms with URLs available, we could use web scraping uh, to actually look at uh, online, uh, the, the, whatever desired information we need from, from the platforms, including financial accounts. However, that is not necessarily a very straightforward exercise. In summary, the emergence of the digital platform is that it provides innovative benefits for producers and consumers, but these developments bring risks with it on fair competition, trustworthiness, consumer rights, and decent working conditions. This requires at least some regulation, whether or not with the industry, but also restraint not to frustrate these innovative developments. To get a good picture of the platform economy, new data are needed. Given the very complex business processes of platforms, it is a statistical challenge to actually obtain data from platforms. However, some work has begun by some statistical offices on measuring the digital economy and even on measuring platforms with a focus on the sharing economy. Platform economy measurement is a challenge because of complexity, cross-sector and cross-border capacity, and the rapid growth, but usage data can proxy for economic value. Private sector organizations are already collecting various data and generating information on the broader digital economy. NSOs can re-engineer their existing surveys, for instance, the LFS, business surveys, household surveys on ICT usage, and supplement this with traditional 
this, sub, this uh, traditional data collection with innovative data sources such as web scraping. The measurement on the digital platform and sharing economy have wide implications for policy implications for ensuring a positive dynamic of social good of platforms that should continue while preventing abuse in the foundational layer below. Thank you very much for your attention.